Let's welcome Dallas Craig. So exciting to meet you. I'm a big fan, and I mean, this is kind of an embarrassing way to start the interview. But I have, in the past, like, play, tried to play some of your songs and sing them to girls I was dating, and had horrible reactions from them. <laughs> is that something you're aware of? It's just like I'm very aware of it. Like me butchering beautiful songs that you've written. <laughs> well, I, I mean, maybe not necessarily the butchering part, but I, <laughs> I, you're not the first guy to come up to me and say, uh, "I've, you know, thank you for the the dating music." Oh. <laughs> Yeah, the courtship. Yeah, well, it yeah. sounds like their stories are more successful than Sam. Yeah, yeah, some, yeah. I think some of them are, but this also they could be lying to me. You know, they don't tell. They don't tell me how they go. So I've that was nice of you. Vivid memory of a girlfriend saying, "You're ruining this song." Because <laughs> <laughs> you weren't well, yeah. Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Welcome to Australia, but I feel like there's no point saying that really because you have been here. I'm told 18 times. To you spent more time in Australia than I have. Yeah, we were actually <laughs> talking about it in the car. I think I've done 18 tours, but I. If you count all the times I've come over just for one show or uh, press, I think it's been, I think this is my 25th time here. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Like, it's what, my favorite place to come. Like, Do you what, get like what? a residency here now? <laughs> what goes on? I, well, I'm wondering when they're going to offer me that, <laughs> you know? Do you think there's some like Canadian, Australian kind of symmetry going yeah, on? There, there absolutely is. I mean, if you, if you travel across Canada, you'll meet tons of Australians that have gone there. And I, and I, feel, I feel like it's vice versa with, with here. And, you know, there's that sort of, unspoken kinship between us mm. Mm. and uh, I've always felt that since the first time I came here and I remember that I came a year after the first time and and someone said to me I can't believe you're back so soon and I thought to myself it's been a year and they told me oh sometimes bands come once and never come back mm. and that just always stuck with me and as an independent artist I go where people are listening yeah. and Australia's always really been appreciative of the songs I write and sing so you're, mu okay. you're much loved, but your your last trip to Oz was tr cut tragically short. Can you yeah. tell us about that? Yeah, we were. Um, I was in Sydney doing press, and we were over here just to play one show up in Brisbane. And, and a bunch of my crew were up in Brisbane, and they went. Uh, they were just there for like a little bit of a holiday before mine. My dear friend Carl Barham uh, drowned tragically, and it was. Um, yeah, it's like. It's the hardest thing that's ever happened in my life. And um, and then COVID happened. So it was very, I, I had this sort of very strange experience where this place that I loved so much and this place that had so many good memories, especially with Carl, um, had this dark cloud over it. Uh, but years have passed and um, you know, I've been able to write about it and sort of, I'm, I, I don't want to say like I'm in a good place with my grief, but I'm... I've had time. You was know. that cathartic? Because that grief, you know, has turned into the new album, mm -hmm. The Love Still Held Me Near. Was that quite almost a, a therapeutic experience? Yeah, I mean, I've always, I've always treated music that way, writing music that way, it's ever since I was young and realised that I could um, write about what was going on in my head and sort of just get out of my own way, you know, and turn it into a song that would hopefully then go off and grow wings and, and be something for someone else. It, it just has always become this very therapeutic um, experience for me. So at first I didn't know if I was going to write about that, but there was part of me that just knew that it would come out at some point, you know? And once I did start writing and, and sort of putting it down to paper, I realized how helpful it was to speak about it. Because I think with grief, you you almost feel like there aren't the right words to say when you're speaking about it. And it was my, I'd lost people in my life before, but that was the true, it was like losing a brother. And um, when I started writing about it, I realized that this was something I can do. I can do this to help myself. And then hopefully I can put it in a relatable enough way that anybody else who's gone through something similar, because that was it. I realized that what was happening to us wasn't singular to me and my yeah. friends, you know, it happens to everybody. It becomes a gift it to does. everyone. It yeah. does, yeah. So mm -hmm. you become you become aware of that, that if I can sing a song about my experience and, and have someone else uh, take what they need from it, that's all I've ever looked for with my music. It's mm. beautifully said. Great to have you in the country to make some new memories, I think. It's probably yeah. time for that. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for joining us. City and Colours, you are. I'm going to make you do it again in a sec. Um, City and Colours' new album, The Love Still Held Me Near, is out on March 31, and you can head to our website for details on when Alexis on Fire's Aussie tours are happening. Let's do it again, shall we? Please, thank you. Yeah.